الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نحمدك ربنا عدد قطر الأمطار وعدد ورق الأشجار وعدد ما تعاقب الليل والنهار اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم عليه يا ربنا في الآخرين وصل وسلم وبارك عليه في كل وقت وحين وصل وسلم عليه يا ربنا في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم ارض عن الصحابة الأخيار والتابعين الأطهار ومن اتبعهم وعمل بعملهم إلى يوم الدين وارض عنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم آمين I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer, the provider of guidance I invoke Allah's peace and blessings upon our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his household, his companions and their followers and everyone that walks in their footsteps or adheres to their path until the day of judgment and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make each and every one of us among them. Allahumma ameen. My brothers and sisters, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is narrated that one day, Amir al Mu'mineen Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anh was walking the outskirts of Medina. And then he saw a young man who was taking care of some sheep. So he approached him and told him, I'm very thirsty. Can you give me some milk from one of those sheep? And the man told him, they're not my sheep. I cannot give you any without the permission of their owner. He said, what if I buy one from you? He said, they're not mine. I can't sell, the, I can't sell any of them to you. And Umar radiallahu anh told him, why don't you sell me one, keep the money for yourself, and when you go back and give them to their owner later today, tell them that the wolf ate one. And the man, the young man turned, turned to Umar radiallahu anh and told him, فَأَيْنَ اللَّهِ If I was to do what you asked me to do, and I can fool this human being, where would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be? How can I fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where would I get away from him? Where can I hide from him? And they say that at that moment, Umar radiallahu anh started crying. And then he went back and looked for the man who owned the sheep and owned the young shepherd for he was a slave. And he bought the young shepherd from the man and then he set him free. He emancipated him. And he looked at him and he said, these few words that you said gave you your freedom in this life. And I pray that they would give you freedom from hellfire in the life to come. My brothers and sisters, as we know, <coughs> the acts of worship in Islam are divided into two categories. There are those acts of worship that, are, that can be performed by our body and those are called أَعْمَالُ الْجَوَارِحِ or عِبَادَاتُ الْجَوَارِحِ And then there are those acts of worship that can only be performed by the heart and those are called عِبَادَاتُ الْقَلْبِ And the scholars have agreed that while أَعْمَالُ الْجَوَارِحِ the acts of worship that are performed by our by our bodies, such as fasting, such as prayer, such as giving charity, such as helping others, such as standing up at night in prayer, those are very important part of our faith. But even more important are the acts of worship 
that can only be performed by, by our hearts. <coughs> For as the Prophet ﷺ tells us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَأَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at what you, does not take into consideration what you look like. He does not look at you from the outside, but rather he looks into your heart to see what's in there. And based on that, he judges everything else. And this is why one of the first ahadith that are mentioned almost in every single book that talks about hadith and talks about Islam is the famous hadith that is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى Indeed, actions are judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the intentions for which they, perform, for, they, for which they were performed. And everyone gets only what they have intended. So a person could do something that might look on the outside like a great act of worship. And that person could say all the right things, could dress in all the right ways, and could behave and could fool everyone into thinking that, uh, that they are a very righteous, God-conscious person. But the heart could be rotten. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, one day when, while he was sitting with his companions, he tells his companions, I know of people who will come on the day of judgment with mountains upon mountains of good deeds, white and pure. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at those mountains of good deeds, he will turn them into nothing. So the Sahaba were very concerned and were very alarmed. So they look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they tell him, Ya Rasulullah, sifhum lana, la'allana an nakuna minhum wa la nadri. O Prophet of Allah, tell us who those people are. For maybe we are amongst them without even knowing. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, <coughs> he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّهُمْ إِخْوَانُكُمْ وَمِنْ جِلْدَتِكُمْ They are your brothers. They look just like you do. وَيَأْخُذُونَ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ كَمَا تَأْخُذُونَ They pray, they fast, they stand up at night in worship just like you do. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ إِذَا اخْتَلَوْا بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ انْتَهَكُوهَا But they are people, when they are in private, they transgress upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbid that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade them from doing. They are people who only act to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when others are around. But when they are alone in privacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not pay any attention to him. And this is why our scholars our scholars tell us that when of the best and most significant acts of worship that can be performed by our heart is to be mindful and to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in privacy. Most of us, if not all of us, alhamdulillah, are very decent people. We would never dare steal from someone while others are looking. We would shy away from uttering profanity or watching inappropriate material while others are around. We would not backbite and talk bad and do all sorts of things when others are around. But many <coughs> in, our, in our day and age have been plagued with that disease, my brothers and sisters, that when they are alone in privacy, they turn into a different person. It's as if they have two personalities, one they display to people and one only comes out when they think no one is around, but we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always around. And this is why Al-Hasan al-Basri radiallahu anhu used to say, 
اتق الله ولا يكن الله أهون الناظرين إليك Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the least of your concerns, the person who observes you that you pay the least attention to. When we know that someone is looking at us, we always try to be at our best, to show them the best that we, can, that we have. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's looking at us and no one else, do we give him the same respect and do we give him the same treatment that we give to others? Do we show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we are in the privacy of, of our cars going to work? Or do we turn on all kinds of musics that we would n and, and songs that we would never listen to in front of anyone else? When we are at work and everyone else has left and there is 15 minutes before it's time for us to go home, do we sign ourselves out and then leave instead of staying for those 15 minutes? Do we show up at, to work on time when no one else is there to see us except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we are in our office or when we are by ourselves, do we do our work? Do we work as hard as, if, as we do if our supervisor was standing right there or our co-workers were around us? Do we stand up and pray on time and do our sunnah when we're home by ourselves? Do we read as much Quran before and after salah when we are by ourselves as we do when we are in the masjid and there are other people there? <coughs> Is that what we do, my brothers and sisters? Do we treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least the same way we treat others? Or do we completely ignore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forget that he's even there? Our scholars used to say, if you want to know how much you matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, then look in your heart and see how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters to you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always on your mind and you're always thinking of him and you always, you're always mindful of how your actions and how your words will affect your relationship with him, then you matter to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a thought that comes to your mind every blue moon, then my brothers and sisters, you might not mean much to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Rahman, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Indeed, those who are in awe of their Lord when they are all alone, in, the, in their privacy, when there is no one but them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ To them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all their sins. وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ And He gives them a great reward. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ Those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always conscious of Him being there observing them, they're not just going to get paradise. He said جَنَّتَانِ they will get double the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins, will forgive their mistakes, and He will also double the rewards. Our scholars tell us that if you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or if you had disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the past, and you have broken His commandments, and you have broken the covenant that you took with Him in privacy, then the best way to make up for it is to perform acts of worship also in privacy. If you have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when no one was there but Him to look at you and to see you, then you need to make sure that every time you are alone and, you are, and it's just you and the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to be doing something that would make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proud of you. That's how you make up for that, my brothers and sisters. That's how you erase those sins. Those sins that were committed in privacy can only be forgiven and can only be wiped out and erased by acts of worship that are committed in privacy as well. And this is one of the things that, makes, uh, that, that helps us 
grow and nurture that observance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is something that helps, helps us strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are alone with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of wa wasting our time in watching TV or playing video games, or calling this person on the phone and calling that person on the phone and checking our social media and just wasting our life. Make sure you utilize that time to do something that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu tells us that those that on the day of judgment, when the sun will come so close to people and some people will be drowning in their own sweat, there will, be, there will be seven categories of people who will be standing in the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And three of them, my brothers and sisters, three of those categories have to do with how people treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in privacy. Number one, رَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِيَمِينِهِ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَ يَمِينُهُ مَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَ شِمَالُهُ مَا أَعْطَتْ يَمِينُهُ those who when they give charity, they hide it. And the Prophet ﷺ describes it. He says to the extent that your left hand does not know how much your right hand gave. That is someone who is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private. And the second one, رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهِ People who when they think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in privacy, they can't help but shed tears because they long to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They look forward to being with Him. They love Him so much that they cannot bear the idea that they are separated from Him and they have to wait until they go to Jannah to see Him. And the third category, وَرَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُمْ رَأَةٌ ذَاتَ جَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ And a person who when they are invited to commit sin in privacy, they say, I fear Allah. They pass on that opportunity. They do not commit that sin. Why? Not because they're, they're afraid of others, but because, inni Allah. They are aware of their Lord and they fear disappointing Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ أدعو الله وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وقائل الغر الميامين سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters today we talk about Allah سبحانه وتعالى and our relationship with him when it is just when there is no one else and it is just us and him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that there was a young man who lived in a small village back in the days and he was known to be a good person and to be a righteous man and someone who's always conscious of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life. He lived in a small house that was made of one room and one day there was a storm in his, in, his, uh, in his village and as he was sitting there in his room he hears someone knocking on the door so he opens on the door he opens the door and he finds this young woman who's seeking shelter from the storm and she tells him I live far away and there is nowhere else for me to go because of this storm, can I please stay in your place until the storm passes? So he couldn't leave her out in the storm, so he invites her in. And she sits in the back of his room, and he sits in the other corner minding his own business. But my brothers and sisters, he was a young man. And she was a beautiful woman. And Shaitan was there. And Shaitan would not pass this opportunity. So Shaitan would come to, that, to this young man and tells him, she's there in your room. There is a storm outside. No one is going to hear anything. No one is going to know anything. You can do whatever you want. And she sure is not going to go and tell people. 
And this young man fights the desire. But it becomes overwhelming for him. So he grabs the candle that was on the table, lighting, providing um, light in the room, and he starts bringing the candle very close to his hand. And he feels the heat of that candle, and he tells himself, هَلْ تَصْبِرِينَ عَلَى النَّارُ يَا نَفْسِي My own soul, you're telling me to do all these things, but you know the consequences. Can you withstand? The punishment of hellfire. And then he stands up and prays two rak'ah. But a little bit later, the desire comes back and shaitan comes back and starts whispering in his ears again. And the man does the same thing. He, gets, he grabs the candle and he gets his hand very close and he feels the heat. And the heat becomes unbearable. And he repeats to himself, هَلْ تَصْبِرِينَ عَلَى النَّارُ يَا نَفْسِي if you want me to do this, can you stand the, the punishment of fire? And he stands up and he prays two rakahs. And he keeps repeating this over and over and over. And of course, the poor girl is sitting in the other corner. She cannot hear what he's saying. So she doesn't know what's going on. She just sees the man putting his hand very close to the flame and then standing up and praying and repeating and repeating and repeating until the storm passed and until the morning came. And then the woman leaves the house and she goes on her way. And a couple of days later, a man knocks on his door. And when he opens, that man tells him, you don't know me, but my daughter sought shelter in your house a couple of days ago from the storm. And I came here to thank you and express my gratitude. But I want to ask you something. And you have to promise to be honest with me. My daughter said she kept seeing you putting your hand on the flame of the candle. Why would you do that? Why would you put yourself, why would you cause yourself so much pain? And he tells him why he did what he did. And the man tells him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I know I can never find a better man who would take care of my daughter than you. I hereby offer you my daughter in marriage. Would you accept? And the man accepts and the woman accepts and they get married. And subhanAllah, my brothers and sisters, because when he was by himself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the middle of that storm, he stopped himself from committing sin for that one day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that woman in marriage for halal for the rest of their lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us always be mindful of him and his presence in our life in everywhere we are and everywhere we go. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the love we have for him in our hearts more than any desire and more than any temptation can ever be in our hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us always utilize our time in public and in private to get closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma gfir lana ma qaddamna wa ma akharna wa ma asrarna wa ma a'lanna wa ma anta ya rabbana a'lamu bihi minna. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa arzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baqila baqila wa arzuqna ajtinabahu bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim. واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا إنك على ما تشاء قدير أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة